Good afternoon, everyone. Um, can you hear me okay? Uh, my name is Dara Macdonald. I'm the uh, Group Business Editor of INM, um, a relatively new role. I'm still in phase one uh, in the first 100 days, but it's a, a privilege for me to be here this afternoon. Um, just some housekeeping rules, first of all, uh, if you could just make sure that your phones um, are turned to silent. Um, this event will be on record, uh, so a bit like Davina McCall and Big Brother, do not swear. Um, and if in the questions and answers session, if you could identify yourself and the organisation that you're affiliated with, that would be really helpful um, for that. Um, unfortunately today, I think you may be aware that uh, Valdis Dombrovskis won't be able to uh, join us. He will be joining us by video, but we do uh, have Philip Rother, who's the Chief Economist at the Vice President's Office, who is here today and hopefully might uh, be able to join the debate uh, uh, later this afternoon. But uh, you're all very welcome. As we know, last month the, the Commission published its 2016 country-specific recommendations for Ireland and they'll be subject to approval uh, by the European Council later this month. Um, it's been five years since the European semester process uh, began and uh, a consideration of Ireland's country-specific recommendations comes at a very interesting time this year uh, when we have a new intake of students, um, as it were, and although it took longer than expected uh, to get a government out of the formation playground, they're very much in the classroom and ready for what I think will be a challenging term. Um, if we look at the recommendations, there's quite a bit of homework to do in terms of what uh, the Commission has recommended, including taking steps to broaden the tax base, trying to reduce our vulnerabilities to external shocks and not least I'm sure Brexit is in many people's minds, to use our current um, rapid, some might say perhaps too rapid growth, to try and um, uh, reduce down or accelerate our debt reduction. And there's also the need to continually um, finalise the debt solutions for, for non-performing uh, loans. Um, the central credit registry is also an issue that has been highlighted in the recommendations. Um, in terms of um, employment, it's looking to incentivise employment, in particular looking at um, low-intensity households, those where, where no is working and also to improve access to uh, affordable childcare. Um, one thing we perhaps don't hear enough about is that the need to increase capital spending um, and to address key weaknesses uh, that there are, uh, particularly around things like housing, um, water and public transport, all of which are very much occupying the minds of our new ministers um, at present. So um, without further ado, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, one of those ministers, Owen Murphy, uh, the Minister of State uh, for Financial Services, E-Government and Commerce, and welcome him to give the first of our keynote addresses. Thank you. It's two weeks since I was appointed as a Minister of State in the Department of Finance, and this is the first time that the officials have let me out since then. Um, actually, Durban and I did a, a debate on Brexit, a podcast earlier in the week, uh, arguing for the UK to stay in, and the day after polls showed that more were in favour of leaving. So <laughs> I'm going to tread carefully here today, folks. Um, but it is, uh, I'm very pleased to be here to join you this afternoon at this event co-hosted by the, the IIEA and the representatives from the Commission. And it's, it's a genuine privilege to be able to be here to discuss the annual publication of the Commission's country-specific recommendations and to do so with such a distinguished panel. Um, I think this presents a useful opportunity to develop a shared view of the key challenges and the opportunities that are facing all of us in Europe, but while also recognising the, the specific challenges and the individual approaches that countries such as Ireland can take. And the overall aim of the European semester process is essentially twofold, to ensure fiscal sustainability and to promote economic growth. And here in Ireland, we're, we're acutely aware, I think, of how an uneven and unsustainable growth trend can have a very real and a very damaging impact on people's everyday lives. And the title of today's event reflects the context where many member states have undergone significant fiscal consolidation and the deficits and debt levels across the EU are reducing or, or at the very least stabilizing. And so our focus must be on how we can foster sustainable growth underpinned by sound fiscal policy that will then enhance people's qualities of life. I mean, given the sacrifices that people have made over the past number of years here in Ireland, what can we now do, given the position we're in, to, to make that burden a little lighter, uh, not just today, but also tomorrow into the future, and then protect those, those gains that we have made when we can make them? Because the economic recovery here now is well underway. Ireland registered what has been termed remarkable growth rate of 7.8% in 2015, and current projections also indicate this recovery is set to continue and both the Department of Finance and the Commission uh, are forecasting a GDP growth of 4.9% in 2016, which again will put us at the top of the European League table, tables in this respect. Now, this expansion of economic activity in Ireland um, was initially led by the exporting sectors, but what we've seen in the last year in particular, and we're, we're forecasting it to continue into this year, is, the, is growth now broadening out and being increasingly driven by domestic factors, 
as confidence returns and households and businesses plan for the future. So the draft 2016 stability program update, which was published and submitted to the Commission in April, was part of the, the ongoing European semester and the changes that we've made in the last number of years. Uh, but because of the ongoing government formation talks, which uh, were lengthy and sometimes tortuous, having been involved in them, um, this was done on a no policy change basis for 2016. But that said, no policy change doesn't mean that we were standing still. Uh, that update had to take into account demographic changes, increases in public sector pay, and investment in certain areas of capital spend. Now, in that program update, the Department of Finance forecast that the economy had the capacity to grow at around the three, point, uh, three and a quarter percent per annum over the medium term. Uh, those rates aren't a given, of course. They rely on the right policy mix. And as a small open economy, Ireland must always remain cognizant of the challenges and the risks from abroad. And our challenge, of course, today, and our commitment as a government, is to broaden the recovery across the country and to ensure that citizens across all of Ireland feel that uplift that's currently very much being experienced in Dublin and in other urban centres. Now, the most tangible impact of the recovery has been in the jobs market, with continued significant jobs growth. And the quarterly data released just last week shows that the number at work continue to grow, and the level of employment is now just shy of the 2 million mark. And I think quite remarkably, we've seen 14 consecutive quarters of employment growth. And importantly, that growth is in almost every sector, and it's in every part of the country. So it's not just a Dublin-based job recovery. And in parallel, there's been a steady decline in the employment rate, with the latest data showing that the unemployment rate has now fallen below 8%. So when we go back to 2012 and the action plan for jobs that was brought in then by Richard Bruton and the government, over 151,000 jobs have been created since then. And given that success rate, the program for government that's recently been adopted by the new partnership government has affirmed this strategy as the best method to consult with all stakeholders and progress the best ideas on job creation across government. Coming now to the public finances, underpinning the favourable economic conditions, the improvement in Ireland's fiscal position provides a solid platform upon which funding for investment in our public services and public infrastructure can be provided for the years ahead. As Ireland reduced its deficit below 3% in 2015, the Commission, as part of its spring European semester package, recommended to the Council of Ministers that Ireland's excessive deficit procedure be closed, and it's anticipated that, following the legal process at EU level, the decision to close Ireland's procedure will be adopted by finance ministers this July. Now, this is an important milestone for Ireland. We've been subject to the corrective arm of the Stability and Growth Pact since 2009, and our ex exit from the corrective procedure is down to the sacrifices and the commitments that the Irish people have made. And we're now subject to the preventive arm of the pact. And this means that we move towards balancing the budget in structural terms. And the programme for government sets 2018 as the time frame to achieve this. The general government deficit is forecast to be at 1.1% of GDP for this year. And the projected fall is to 0.4% of GDP for next year. Now, this move from the corrective to the preventive arm of the pact is a real game changer for this country when it comes to our finances and it comes to planning for the future and what we'll be able to do. It helps to ensure the long-term sustainability of the public finances. It secures a continued reduction in our debt, which is important, and it provides a positive environment for economic growth. Looking at debt just for a moment, debt sustainability is, of course, key in everything that we do. It's key to sound public finances, and Ireland's debt-to-GDP ratio has steadily fallen since 2012, when it peaked at just above 120% of GDP. This year, gross government debt is expected to fall below the euro area average for the first time since 2009 to 89% of GDP, and is projected to fall further in the medium term. Um, if we look at reform and reform of our budgetary process, that's a key part of the challenge that we now face, I think, as a new government and looking ahead into the future. Um, excuse me. We've had reform in recent years, but further significant reforms are on the way. Later this month, the government will publish its summer economic statement, setting out the room for budgetary maneuver next year and over the medium term. This will be followed by a national economic dialogue at the end of the month, in which all stakeholders can have their say in the priorities for our econo economy and our society. There will also be greater parliamentary involvement in how we frame our budgets and in how we decide our budgets. And we're going to establish, and at the moment doing its scoping work, a new budget and finance committee, a new budget oversight committee, really, to do that work. And they'll be able to set up their own independent budget oversight office to do their own costings and their own work separate from the government. And that'll hope to be in place um, by spring of next year. And in this manner, it's envisaged that a whole of your approach could be taken to budgetary formation with a greater fo focus on outputs and delivery, moving away from the big bang budget day that we've had in the past, moving away from this idea of, of the secrets being held closely until the final moment that they're revealed. And the proposed new approach is intended to facilitate a more open budgetary process to allow stronger dialogue with the Dáil 
on key elements and facilitate the continued central role of government in the development of budgetary proposals. What we want to see is, is the government working with the Parliament to come together with a shared vision for the future of our budget formation over the coming years. So looking now to the future and what it might mean to invest in Ireland's future, there is broad recognition that there's a strong case for increased public capital investment across the EU. This must, however, be implemented in a sustainable way, ensuring value for money for the taxpayer and in full compliance with the fiscal rules. The programme for government takes the first steps towards increasing public capital spending in priority areas by identifying the level of increased resources available. The programme states, subject to a raucous approval, that an additional four billion in exchequer capital investment will take place up to 2021. And this will be allocated in such areas as health, housing, transport, broadband and education. The programme for government also commits to a review of government priorities which are set out in the capital investment plan published last year and that will be undertaken by the middle of next year. This review will also provide the government with an opportunity to consider the scope for increased levels of investment if they are necessary and the reform budgetary process once underway will also provide an opportunity for the Oireachtas to contribute to the determination of capital priorities. Now, we're here today, of course, to discuss the European semester, which culminates in the adoption of the annual country-specific recommendations for each member state. And as you're aware, the European semester is a framework within which the EU's post-crisis reform operate, and whereby policy guidance, informed by broad reform priorities agreed at EU level, is provided to member states. As with the process in 2015, the three main pillars underpinning the 2016 country-specific recommendations are the three reform priorities that are set out in the 2016 annual growth survey published in November. They are investment, structural reform, and fiscal responsibility. The CSRs advocate a policy mix tailored to the challenges facing each member state. And from Ireland's perspective, we've been a consistent supporter of the economic governance reforms in the EU and the Euro area. And given the interlinkages across member states, policy guidance, peer review, and monitoring are essential to ensure a smooth functioning of the monetary union and to promote sustainable growth in the EU. The Commission published its proposals for 2016 country-specific recommendations on the 18th of May. The Commission proposed three recommendations for Ireland, which addressed three broad challenges. One is the sustainability of the public finances, including a broad tax base, and improving value for money on the expenditure side. Number two is supply-side reforms, including labour market activation policies and improving access to affordable childcare. Number three are financial sector policies, including ongoing work to finalise durable restructuring solutions for non-performing mortgages and business loans, and to operationalise the central credit register. Now, we welcome the 2016 proposed recommendations because they align well with the national policy directions that are already firmly established, focusing on policy areas where work is underway to address challenges that I think we all acknowledge here in this country. These proposed CSRs can be seen as reflecting continuity with last year's process, and they're informed by ongoing engagement between the Commission and Member States and are consistent with the, the no surprises principle. And this is what we should expect from a, a well-functioning European semester process. Shared analysis supporting shared conclusions. Uh, just to conclude briefly, uh, the economic recovery in Ireland was facilitated by the implementation of a wider range of reforms and significant fiscal consolidation. And we must not become complacent. And building on Ireland's strong track record of reform delivery, we must continue to strive to implement reforms which will boost productivity, enhance competitiveness, and support durable growth. An important lesson from the European semester process is that for meaningful policy guidance, exchange of best practice and peer review, it is essential that the policy-making process at EU level remains open and inclusive. This chimes with our approach at national level with the reforms to the budgetary process that are now underway. We shouldn't be afraid of information and we shouldn't be, made to be afraid to make difficult choices off the back of that information. But political choices on investment in public services must be balanced with the need to reduce public debt and to ensure sustainability, and that is key. We must ensure that there is sufficient agreement on the need and importance of reducing our public debt position and closing the deficit quickly. And as we plan ahead, that we share recognition of the need for balanced and sustainable management of the public finances, together with a responsible approach to direct taxation and indirect taxes and charges. With such a foundation, and I think if we're being honest, it's not clear at the moment that we do have that foundation across the political sphere in this country, but with that kind of foundation, there are some great opportunities for this country and for its people. Thank you.